Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about counters in the CP1H uh, PLC by Omron. And the first thing we want to do is start by um, looking at the secret of using counters. And the counters, if we go back to a, uh, a post that we did a little while ago, the secret of using counters, it actually will walk through um, how to use the counter by use of a timing chart and how you have the current value and set value and as you count up to the set point it turns on the output. So there's lots of information on the website about how to do that. And in our, our case here what we will be doing is we will be actually using a dart speed pickup sensor and the dart uh, speed pickup sensor will provide us pulses into the PLC in order for us to pick up and, and look at our counters that we're going to be using. And I can look at the installation guide and there it is there. So um, basically what this uh, pickup will do is just give us a series of pulses as I turn the um, unit itself. So here's my pickup sensor and I have it wired into input number 8 so as I turn it you can see my pulses actually going into the PLC. So the first thing what we'll do is uh, we'll call up our program and I have a few examples of the counter instructions within the controller itself. Uh, we basically have two basic versions. We have a counter and we have a, a reverse counter and how we use those counters determine how the functionality is going to work. So let's look at my first example up here. Here I'm online. Um, we'll just get rid of the left hand side here and we can uh, see that a little more clearly. So in our case here I'm going to turn on bit 21.00. Uh, we'll just uh, set that on. That will enable my pickup sensor to start uh, counting and I have count value 0 and it's a set value of 30. So once I hit the value of 30 this counter bit will turn on which then in turn will turn my output. So let's see how that works. I'll just turn my encoder here and you can see we're counting down from the set value and as soon as we get to uh, the set value my output turns on and then my corresponding uh, bit output bit turns on here and everything seems to be working. In order to reset that counter, I have a separate input here, 2101. So if we set that on, it actually turns on and resets that counter. And it doesn't matter if my pulses are still coming in. As you can see up here, if I turn it, nothing counts until I then reset or take the reset off of my counter. And then as I pulse here, I can then decrement my count value again. So that is actually a uh, what we call uh, a memory tentative counter because if I lose power to the PLC, this set or the present value here, this 20 I have currently, is going to be re retained. So we're going to always remember what that is if we um, until we hit that reset. So let's set that off. So our next example is we're going to take that same counter, the counter instruction, and we're going to count, count counter one. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this counter into a memory attentive timer. So what we're going to do is as soon as I turn on this bit, you'll see my internal clock bit flag, which is my 0.1 second, will then start uh, uh, counting or pulsing. And when that pulse goes into the counter, um, I have a set value here of 100. So we multiply those two together and we get a value of 10 seconds. So once I turn this on, 10 seconds later, I will then turn on um, my output, counter 1 here, and then we'll turn it, which in turn, turn on my output, my physical output, 100.01. So let's give that a try. I'll set that on. And you can see it now, it's uh, timing down. And sure enough, when that uh, time's up, that output then turns on. Again, the only way to reset it is to actually use the uh, uh, 
set button. We turn that reset button on here. We force that contact bit and now it resets back to 100 and you see it's still pulsing on my 1.1 second but my counter is not moving right now. As soon as I then uh, take that reset off it will then start counting and I'll turn that off. Again memory retentive so if I turn power off or switch the mode of the PLC I will still maintain my present value of 58 that I have here. Okay. My next one is my non-memory attentive counter. That means that when I, I turn power off and turn back on again, it resets itself. And all we're doing there is again, we're going to use counter number two. It's set for 30 again. And when counter two turns on, I turn on my output 100.02. So in this case here, I'll turn this on. And there we go. And now, if I turn my encoder, or my pickup sensor, I can start counting down. And again, it just works like the regular counters. So, right now we said this is non-memory attentive. So what we'll do is we'll go up to the program mode here, and we'll change this back into um, stop mode. So yes, we'll stop that. So our processor is stopped. You'll see the run light's now off. And now we'll turn back on again. When we turn it back on again, what you'll notice is that our first scan flag would, would come on and it automatically resets that counter back to the, uh, the set value, which is 30 in our case. So I'm going to set that back on. And again, my counter starts counting down. And we'll turn that back off. Then we have a reversible counter. Now the reversible counter itself, um, what it has is three inputs. The first one is my uh, decrement, my, sorry, my increment, then my decrement, and then my reset. So in this case here, I have counter number three. Counter number three then turns on output number four that I have here. So what we'll do is, um, let's turn this on. Now that it's on, we'll now, you can see that I'm incre incrementing my counter. And then once I go past, one past my set value, I then turn the counter on. If I go back up again, it turns it off. So the other um, one is my decrement. And we'll turn this one off. And on my decrement, you'll see I have 10 in there now, 9. And now I'm going back down to 0. And 1 past 0, it turns the output on. And then again, I go down, and then it turns it back off again. If they're both on, set that. So they're both on right now. And you'll see that it makes no change because one's incrementing, one's decrementing at the same time. And then, as always, when I hit the, the next one, it will actually reset this value. Now the last one here is my counter reset range. And it's a unique construction in the CP1H. So what it will do is it will actually reset the all the present values to the set values of the counters and I specify a range in this case here uh, counter 0 to counter 3 which corresponds to my counters I have up here so here I have uh, a present value of 20 I have uh, 58 and I have 21 here so let's just uh, we'll energize that Turn these ones off. And what we'll do is when we energize this bit, and then turn it back off again, what you will notice is now all of my counters have reset. The reversible counters reset to zero. My uh, counter two is 30, 
and counter 1 is 100 and counter 0 is now back to 30 as well. So that's it for uh, my counters. And you remember that the, the CP1H is a very powerful uh, uh, unit itself and when we talk about counters we usually talk about frequency of the pulses coming into the counter and what you'll notice here in my uh, my scan time if you look at the bottom um, of my, in my monitor mode I actually see a scan time of, of about one millisecond so that means that I can bring in pulses um, it, I can read a pulse in one millisecond which is a thousand times a second so frequency is a rate at which you read over time so the the PLC, it actually has a, a, the input actually has a default of 8 milliseconds input filter. That's to allow for bounce. So we can change that around. So we also have on this counter, we have um, four high speed counter inputs that are used that can be up to 50 kilohertz frequency and they can use differential phases. That means that the, the A and B phase leader lag and it will uh, able to um, detect that and either count up or down. This can increase to 100 kilohertz when using any of the three modes. Um, there's also an interrupt counter mode and what that allows to do is we have eight different counters that can activate an interrupt task when the count reaches a set value and the maximum response frequency of those would be 5 kilohertz. Okay. Now all the links that we've talked about are um, are available. There, are, all the links and downloads can be found on our website itself. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways you can help us out. First, you can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of this video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, you will get notification. Um, every time we publish new content to the site, you also get uh, some links for free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.